Months after President Joe Biden dismissed a story in the New York Post about his son Hunter Biden's laptop as being simply Russian disinformation, the journalists who broke the original story in October have been vindicated. The story shed light on Hunter Biden's questionable business dealings in Ukraine and China, and even revealed Hunter offered a Ukrainian executive the opportunity to meet his father, who at the time was vice president in the Obama administration. When the story was published on October 14, all hell broke loose, but much of the fury was actually directed at the journalists by a US media establishment rushing to defend their preferred presidential candidate. Joe Biden kicked off the conspiracy theory, suggesting it was all a Russian plot to destroy his presidential bid. There are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plan. They have said that this is, has all the care. Four, five former heads of the CIA, both parties, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. 50 former intelligence operatives. So none of them are currently intelligence operatives and wouldn't have a clue what they are talking about in relation to contemporary investigations. Yet instead of journalists asking for the evidence for this claim, they publish story after story attacking the New York Post's credibility and breathing life into the Russian disinformation lie. Facebook went so far as to prevent people from being able to share the article, and Twitter froze the New York Post's account altogether, a move they later had to backflip on. But during all of this chaos, Hunter Biden simply could have dismissed the story as being false. But he was silent until now, when he admitted to CBS journalist Tracy Smith that the laptop could very well have been his. Was that your laptop? For real, I don't know. I know, but, but you know that's... Is, this is I really a... don't know what okay. the answer is. That's you don't know truthfully. yes or no if the laptop was yours. I don't have any yours. idea. I have no idea. So could have been yours. Of course, certainly. It, 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 there could be a laptop out there that was stolen from me. There could be that I was hacked. It could be that it was, the, that it was Russian intelligence. It could be that it was stolen from me. Now, Hunter, who has been under investigation since 2018 by federal prosecutors, in relation to his tax affairs and Chinese business dealings, had the opportunity to dismiss the laptop as a Russian plant. But even he couldn't say for sure. So all of those stories questioning the validity of the contents of the laptop look pretty bad in hindsight. And the Russian spy conspiracy theory floated by Joe Biden himself? Well, that travelled all the way to Australia and has been picked up as a legitimate news line by none other than our ABC. In this article, ABC journalist Matt Bevan, around the time of the original Post scoop, he urged Australians to be sceptical of the story and offered a different theory. The other possibility is that Russian intelligence hacked into Hunter Biden's information and then they laundered what they found through a laptop and, a drop, and dropped it off to a friendly computer shop, he said. Either way, the information on the laptop is highly questionable. Well, he presented no evidence for his conspiracy theory, but it was published as being the more likely uh, scenario than the Post being accurate. Taxpayer-funded, highly partisan nonsense. Thankfully, we have New York Post journalist Miranda Devine here to talk us through the backstory of uh, the Biden's laptop scandal, and she's also writing a book about the laptop called The Laptop From Hell. Miranda, walk me through it. Was, was this all Russian disinformation? Well, I mean, that was a scandal. You had 50 former uh, spooks, basically people like John Brennan and James Clapper uh, and George Tennant. I mean, these people have been responsible for some of America's worst intelligence failures, starting with failing to heed warnings about 9-11, uh, dreaming up these WMDs that Saddam Hussein never had as a pretext for the Iraq war, um, you know, right up to the Russia collusion hoax that they foisted on the country and tried to hobble uh, the Trump administration with and Donald Trump, uh, which all turned out to be untrue, completely a lie. And then, I mean, why anyone has gives them any credibility after that track record, they turn around and <laughs> on zero evidence claim in their expert opinion that the laptop and our story 
is Russian disinformation. Well, I can tell you the laptop was real. It belonged to Hunter Biden. He was in the middle of one of his many crack benders. Uh, he dropped it off. It was waterlogged at this Mac repair shop in Delaware and then went off to uh, for another bender in LA and never came back to pick it up. It became the property of the owner of the shop and eventually within a year or so found its way to former mayor Rudy Giuliani who ended up ringing me up one Saturday night and offering it to me. So there you go. That's the story. The the information that my colleague uh, there, Emma Jo, um, uh, managed to uh, glean out of the laptop has never been refuted. Nobody has ever, none of the Bidens have ever said, no, that's not the laptop, that information is not true. Uh, we've also verified the emails and other information on the laptop by um, cross-referencing them with uh, Tony Bobolinsky, who is a, a former business partner of Hunter's, um, he handed over three of his phones to the Wall Street Journal and the FBI. The contents of those marry up perfectly with the contents of the laptop. And then there's another, a third point of light, which is the Senate inquiry into Hunter Biden's business dealings overseas. Again, a perfect match. And there's another group of information, uh, which is a guy called Bevan Cooney, another former business partner of Hunter Biden, now in jail, as a lot of his business partners do end up in jail or disappeared if they're from China. Um, and he's also handed over to other journalists um, a treasure trove of his entire uh, computer contents. So it is irrefutable, and that's why you see Hunter Biden in these interviews for his own book, dissembling, pretending, <laughs> making out that he can't remember because he was on crack, but he couldn't remember when he had his first glass of wine at the age of eight. Well, there you go, straight from the woman who received the laptop herself from Rudy. Gemma, what do you make of, of the way that this was covered from a journalistic side to, to see the ABC when they, they, don't, they didn't get the laptop, they didn't have the laptop, they had no way of knowing either way, but then they choose to discredit it, what I assume must be for political reasons. What do you think of that? Well, I mean, I try to make a point of never assuming, but it certainly isn't encouraging when, when there is such clear publication bias. And I've said this before, Jack, every organisation under the sun has a degree of bias because every organisation is made up of humans who are not robots. However, that doesn't negate us from doing our jobs as journalists, which is to be fair and accurate. That is the, the fundamental role of everybody who calls themselves a journalist, fairness and accuracy. And the coverage of this story has just been... I mean, if it wasn't so serious, it would be laughable because it's literally the dog ate my homework answer from Hunter Biden. Like, we're, we're asked to believe his preposterous um, explanations in the face of incredible um, and, and really compe compelling evidence to the contrary. Um, you know, to Miranda's point, do you honestly think that if none of this stuff that has been um, reported wasn't true, that he wouldn't be filing for some kind of defamation or taking some sort of restrictive legal action if there wasn't absolute truth to it? Uh, the, the reporting of this story has been, uh, as I said, you know, disappointingly one-sided in the face of compelling evidence to the contrary. Well said. And Miranda, I cannot wait to read your book because I'm sure you're going to lay it all out forensically. Uh, well done. Congratulations uh, on, on, the, on the scoop for the post and good on you for sticking by it, even when the social media giants were trying to, to censor you guys and blocking your accounts. Um, I'm very glad that you didn't delete the post and, and you held your ground. Uh, it's, it was very, very good to see. And uh, fortunately, that's all the time we've got for this panel. Thanks, Jack. But thank you both for joining me. Miranda Devine, Gemma Tognini.